What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. It's freaking go time. I'm fired up. You fired up? Well, I'm freaking fired up. You should get fired up. I don't know why I'm all fired up. I'll tell you why I'm all fired up. Because we got the trucks gone wild. Freaking truck tugs in the barn in Sanford, Florida. Coming on tomorrow. I'll tell you that. Oh, boy. God, my freaking favorite thing to do. If you ain't been watching my videos, you need to be watching the videos. For one, I need some subscribers. I need to get that subscribing right up. Thing is freaking low. We need to get it up through the roof. But that's not the only reason. The other reason why is because truck tugs are about the most super bitching thing you possibly do when they make a truck other than mud bog. And I tell you that truck shows, yeah, they're kind of cool. Something to do if you're a little bored on the weekend. But freaking truck tugs, I tell you one something. These things, whoa, look at that, look at that tire. That thing's gonna be going. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what it's gonna be like. Freaking smoke pouring out of it. Got the nitrous bottle filled up. Freaking diesel smoke flying out of that hood stack. That hood stack right freaking there. That thing's gonna be. Throwing all kinds of smoke in the air. Got nitrous purging out so we can get it. Boom, 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 nice wet shot in the motor. Tell you want something, it's going to be super freaking bitch. Are y'all on my freaking level or what? Come on. I ain't kidding around. I'm freaking serious. So now we're getting ready for the truck tugs. If y'all didn't see the video at the end of last RYC when I do a little video of what we got to do to detail the truck and get it looking this super freaking spiffy. Man, look at that thing. It's like a damn show truck that we just do everything with. I'll tell you that, that's what's cool, huh? Multi freaking purpose, that's the name of the game, I'll tell you that. So since my last video, I've been going around swapping out all the fluids. Got all the fluid out of the centers, got all the fluid out of the outers. I haven't done anything to the fluid in the outers in like probably about a year or so because they're actually sealed up pretty damn good. Learned my lesson when that freaking corner right on there welded itself together and blew itself apart. Guess what? Now them babies are nice and sealed up, fresh oil in them all the time. But I went ahead and started swapping all those fluids. They're pretty much all done. I actually ran out of oil because it takes a lot of damn oil to keep this thing all lubed up. But I got to finish swapping the fluid in that passenger side front corner. Then I got to go around and grease all the fittings. Get all them super bitching face plates that are supposed to cover that ugliness up. It says super killing it on it. It doesn't say super. It says killing the lifestyle on it. Probably could have said super killing on it. Though. If I would have asked for it, I bet he'd have done it. Anyways, digress a lot. Oh, freaking squirrel brain, tell you that. Besides from swapping all the fluids out and greasing all the fittings, that's pretty much all I got to do. Got to do a little bit of cleaning on the interior. It's a little bit not quite ideal then i'm gonna go around and hit all the aluminum with a little bit of polish because it's looking a little bit shit bag then it's time to get old girl up on the trailer and get her ready to rock and roll so we can freaking start ripping some people backwards i'll tell you one something this thing really gets me fired up for any of y'all that do follow the videos close enough and are curious i think to fix that front axle we're gonna build the whole new front axle for this truck and not whole new we're gonna be reusing some of the parts like we'll probably reuse that outer i'll reuse that new center chunk that i literally just put in there reuse my helmet and that'll be pretty much it so i'll just be replacing just this section so that i can get one that's a little bit wider so i can get the proper axle shafts that will actually seal up then hopefully all this will be behind us but that is a lot of damn work and it ran for like a year and a half the way i had it so eh, i don't necessarily need to fix it right this second while i wait till there's a little bit of downtime maybe around new year's i don't know play by ear so without further ado i'm gonna get this little bit of work knocked out get her looking super freaking spiffy loaded up on the trailer and tomorrow 11 o'clock we're freaking loading up heading on over to the truck tugs over the barn in sanford florida oh god i'm freaking fired up carlos come for you buddy if y'all don't know mr carlos he's got buddy's roofing 2.0 used to have the buddy's roofing red truck that old ford and then he was really thinking about going to first place getting himself a freaking duramax and duramax bald eagles they are addictive i'll tell you that instead he decided to settle back in where he's comfortable with the ford so i'm more than excited to rip his ass backwards i'll tell you that and then we got slow motion alley he's got them big old 35 fives probably hooked to him i don't know i still got my money on us he's got like another 2,000 pounds because of freaking wheels and tires but you know what i don't care regardless we're gonna have fun i'm either gonna blow his freaking doors off and rip him backwards or i'm just gonna smoke my tires off the rim one way or the other we're gonna have some damn fun i'll tell you that so i'll be checking back in tomorrow morning y'all boom look at that freaking good to go locked in loaded ready to go rip some people backwards i'll tell you that so it wasn't too late of a night last night we got the rest of that fluid swapped out got our super bitch and face plates installed and got the interior and exterior of the truck wiped down a little bit mm, super killing it but there is one thing i was still wanting to do and i forgot to show you all so we're going to take a little detour and we're going to have a little discussion about gear reduction and gear ratios and we're actually going to do this while she's up on the trailer Ugh. so on this truck i run an scs drop box which is right here, that nice piece of aluminum. Also referred to as a transfer case. Well, what's super bitching about the transfer case that we run on this truck, one, it is made by SCS, and it's actually the same soda drop boxes that they use in all the Monster Jam trucks, like Grave Digger, Maximum Destruction, Son of a Digger, all them cool guys. <laughs> same gears, right here in the Killing a Mega Truck. Now, there are a couple other manufacturers that make drop boxes. You've got uh, Tombstone Transfer Cases. They're actually kind of local. They're right from Inglewood, Florida. And Mr. Adrenaline, the mad scientist, actually makes a lot of parts for that guy. So definitely good quality stuff. Who else makes some? FTI makes some. Profab makes some. Those are kind of the main ones. So to be totally honest, the reason we went with SES 
was one, I didn't really know about those other manufacturers at the time. And two, it was because JH Diesel, Justin Hildebrandt highly recommended SES Gearbox. But anyways, this SES Gearbox, what's really cool about it is it's what they call a quick change gearbox. Let me show you what that means. So obviously this truck has a whole bunch of gear reduction. I'll go through and explain that real quick. So our planetary outer hubs inside of that casing there, they've got 3.6 to one gear reduction. And we've got the military five ton center now it's got 6.44 to one gear reduction. Then in our gearbox, we've got, right now I've got 1.69 to one gear reduction. Basically what that means is they've got a smaller gear connected to a bigger gear. The smaller gear has got to turn around X amount of times before it'll actually turn the big gear around one full revolution. So you get a lot more torque that way. And basically speaking, the more you can do that, the less stress it is on all the components that are further up towards the engine. With all the gear reduction that we already have on the truck, right now I'm right about 39 to one, which is kind of cool. It's got its benefits and it's got its drawbacks. Now the benefits are this truck will break these tires loose pretty much in any given situation. Whether I'm stuck in the mud and you get that vacuum effect from the model where it really sucks the truck down in there, makes those tires really hard to turn. Or in a truck tug of war type situation when the truck's kind of bogged down and biting into the asphalt, trying to move itself along with another truck connected to it, attempting to go the other direction. Pretty much any given situation, these tires are breaking loose. Downside of all that gear reduction, you start to run out of gear in your transmission before you get as much wheel speed as you maybe would like. And my favorite thing is getting wheel speed, getting these tires are smoking, get the diesel smoke a porn. That's the freaking best part of the whole show. So all that being said, I've got some new gears that I'm gonna try in the transfer case to try to bring the gear reduction a little bit higher. What I'm hoping it'll do is give me a little bit more wheel speed when we're on the tug pad. So what's super bitching is this is like literally a five minute job to swap out the gears in this truck and it completely will change how the truck is running. All I gotta do is pull this back plate off. You just pull these nuts off, pull this cover off, take the old gears out, put the new gears in, cover back on, ready to rock. So as I just said, the gears that I have in the truck right now are 1.69 to one gear reduction, but I just got these directly from SCS and these are 1.42 gear reduction. So that should put me right around 33 to one. Now that all the nuts off, they've got these machined holes right up here, down here and down here. You just take a 5 16 bolt, thread it in there, and it'll actually thread through the cap and start pressing on the body and actually press the cap off. Then you literally just pull the old gears out, put the new gears in. Easy as that. Now, while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and top off the fluid because I did swap out the fluid, but I didn't refill it all the way because I didn't want to spill anything when I was swapping out the gears. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of hub oil. Now, any of y'all that have mega trucks and haven't been told about this, I'm gonna learn you something real quick. This is Lucas hub oil. Now, I've been having an issue a little bit with my transfer case being super freaking loud. Now, that is generally gonna happen with this type of a transfer case. Reason being, mainly because these gears are straight cut. See how there's like a straight cut to them? as opposed to helical cut to where this will have kind of an angle to it. Oh, nice. Somebody's got a fart on the back of their car. Can't believe people put exhaust like that. They're like, oh, that sounds good. No, it sounds like you had a whole night of beans and rice. But anyways, these gears are straight cut. So that, again, there's benefits and drawbacks. The benefits are this is the strongest gear you could have, a straight cut gear. Downside is compared to a helical cut where it's cut kind of at an angle, sort of like a pinion gear, is it'll be a lot quieter, but it, then it's not as strong. So ideally, I'm going for strength all the way. If it's too loud, turn the radio up a little bit louder. But I do kind of contradict myself a little bit because sometimes it is a little excessively loud. If we're going a little bit faster and the RPMs aren't up in the truck, you can really hear that transfer case just freaking a humming. So to combat that, they recommended I get some of this Lucas Hub Oil and mix this in with the gear oil that goes in the transfer case. So this back end of the transfer case holds about two quarts of fluid. So they said to put about a half a quart of Lucas Hub Oil in there and then about a quart and a half of the regular gear oil that I usually put in there. Now they recommend anything around 80 or 90 weight oil to go in there. I actually run 75, 140. That was actually a little tip that I got from JH Diesel. 75 is close enough to 80 weight, but then when the gear oil actually gets hot, it actually acts like 140 weight, which is a lot thicker, which hopefully will quiet this whole thing up a little bit. But to add even more quietness to the situation, we've got the Lucas Hub Oil. Now this stuff is like freaking molasses, look. It's like so thick, like it's, it is not thin, yeah. So now I just basically reverse all the steps that I just did. After I'm done topping off the oil, this case back on get the nuts tightened back up and then it's time to go with the truck tugs
And just like that, we just changed the gear ratio in the truck from 39 to 1 to, I think, right around 33 to 1. So we'll see how she does in the truck tugs tonight. I hope you all enjoy the video, and hopefully you learn a little something about drop boxes and monster trucks. In particular, quick change gear capable drop boxes and monster trucks. Thanks for watching the video, y'all. If y'all enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel. Hit that button right there. While you're at it, hit the like button at the bottom of your screen. You can also check out our website, killingitlifestyle.com. There you can follow the Killing It crew and order your own apparel so everyone will know you're super killing it. <laughs>